Welcome to Make Pods Great Again. I'm your host, John, back with my girl, Nikki, who is hyped up. What's going on, I am, Nikki? I am hype. I am ready for this discussion. Oh, Woo! this is going to be fun. So we have an awesome, awesome OG guest tonight, Dr. Kelly Starrett. Kelly, how are you? Uh, well, Kesk you say, what's the word? Hyped? Is that hyped. the right? Hyped. Are you using the parlance, the hashtag, the right kid? I think so. Hey, uh, just before we begin, clam slam. All right, there you go. Oh, oh, perfect. Five bucks to charity. <laughs> I feel like in the past I've been like, how do I work this in? How do I like find the clam slam moment? And you were like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make the moment. Right just break the wall. Well, you know, A, let me just start by saying I'm a fan. I'm a fan Aww. of satire. <laughs> I'm not a fan of being mean to CrossFitters. But there is, if when I hold the mirror up in my neighborhood, I am ridiculous. Like our neighbors don't know what to do with us. And we're those guys like, you know, we're, it's okay. Our next door neighbor said that we had cracked the concrete walk to our house, dropping our bumper plates, even though we hadn't cracked our bump, our six foot concrete or gone through the pads, but we had cracked her. So, I mean, that's, that's the kind of people we are. And then, so this is, you're my home. I live vicariously through you. I keep, I, basically, I'm like Apple News. Nah, nah, nah. I go right over to uh, what you're all doing. Oh, uh, my God. K- John's going to make the meme now. Kelly Sturrett <laughs> drops his weight so hard, he cracks the sidewalk on the opposite side of the street. Oh, I, I, I've, already got the, I've already got it figured out. Don't worry. I'll make that happen. <laughs> Especially if you're ghost riding it accordingly. Like, you know, when I, when I you know, I'm cleaning and jerking very heavy, you know, hundred kilos you know you have no idea the immense satisfaction it takes to actually add weight and stay connected and try to bounce it back up all right so before we get too far <laughs> into it, let me let me explain to the crowd listening now a lot of crossfitters kelly i'm sure you know don't read a lot of books that don't have crayons involved all right oh, so man. for those listening uh Kelly is the author of the 2013 book, Becoming a Supple Leopard, which, by the way, when I started CrossFit in early 2012, this book was a staple in our gym. My, my coach would bring the book out for, we'd you know, start warming up, he'd bring the book out, and he'd be like, all right, everybody grab a lacrosse ball, and he'd open your book, and he'd make a shove those balls up our ass, and it was terrible. I hated uh-huh. it. So I hated uh-huh. you for a long time. But I slowly became to like kind of understand what it was all about. And so Nikki and I were funny enough, we're talking a few weeks ago. I'm like, Hey, we should have Kelly on. Like I noticed you were following me. Like I, cause I pay attention to the details, you know, and you kind of was like, Oh my God. Yes. Like CrossFit, like royalty. This is like a legend. Absolutely. Let's have him on. And so we have like a kind of our short list of people that, you know, we're wanting to get on. Well, when Jillian released her video, like right in the middle, she name drops you like right in the middle and, and literally says she worships you. And Which, says your name wrong. And, and said your name wrong, but she worshipped Or have you. we been saying your name wrong? I guess I should ask. No, no, no. I got it right because I, I looked up a video to make sure I pronounced it right. <laughs> good, 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 good. I did my research. Because <laughs> she said it wrong and I was like, stupid. But she and says she like, worships Wait a minute. You. Wait a minute. Am I wrong? Okay, good. Yeah. So I, so I shot you a message and go, hey, dude, she worships you, but I'm going to roast her. And you sent me a voicemail back, which I loved. I laughed my <laughs> ass off for about an hour because when people send me voicemails, I'm like, this is the best. Like, they got something to say. Where there's a voicemail. And he just said to me, yeah, roast the fuck out of her, bro. And I'm like, this is great. So I messaged Nikki. I'm like, we're getting him on the show. Like, we got to do it. And then I said, let's bring him on and let's have constructive conversation, boys. No. That's okay. Look, the the topic (laughs) is, you know, in this moment where, like, gyms are in existential crises, people are depressed. Do people know how to train at home? Like, that is the thing that we're talking about, you know what I mean? Like I was like, do you, I told, I told you I have a a term for it, the zombie thirst trap. So one is that you're like, I'm so thirsty. I need looks. I need, I need likes, right. Mm. Got to get my deep state Nike, um, you know, my, my thing out there. And so what I'll do is I'll take a zombie argument, which is so just tired. Like CrossFit is dangerous. It was really hard. Right. And then you end that with the thirstiness of the whole thing, and it's a zombie thirst trap. So it's it's the perfect zombie thirst trap. In fact, I was like, oh, it, I could set my watch to those 18-month-old, you know, like time for someone to come out and say they don't like CrossFit again. You know, it's crazy, especially 
if, if I'm like, have you ever been to a CrossFit gym? Because the thing you said you did, some burpees and box jumps, we call that conditioning or punishment or things I do when I'm drunk or have eaten too many cookies, right? <laughs> and not, that is not what we talk about or even what we do. Like that's a buyout after the workout. You know what I mean? And so I, I literally am like, okay, what is it about our marketing that we have gotten to this is how people understand the complexity. I'll, let me just come straight up and say it. The coaching that's going on in CrossFit gyms is some of the best coaching in the world. And let me say, I know that because I go everywhere. Name a professional team, name a sport, name an organization, Exos, name a place. I'm there and I will take all of the coaches I know in CrossFit gyms up against them. Oh, you need to program Olympic lifting. You need to do GPP. You want to do general sports preparation. We can do it. And in fact, we do it better than everyone else. And so when I hear that, I'm like, okay, okay. Like sometimes when I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm the greatest husband in the world. And then my wife put something up like you haven't taken out the trash or do what you say you're going to do. And I'm like, no, no, no. I just haven't presented my case effectively that I'm the best <laughs> world. I feel like that's a little bit what's going on. Totally. Totally. I think, so I have boiled this whole nine minute video down to three major issues. And the very first one is a lack of information. And that I think is exactly what you're saying as well, where like you cannot just go out there and be like, I don't understand CrossFit. I don't understand training methodology behind it. I don't understand the point. I'm like, you have clearly never Googled it then. Because if it was new to you six years ago, which is like what she kept saying, like, I guess it's this now. I guess it's three days on one day off, but it wasn't that five years ago when I said whatever. If it was whatever it was to you five or six years ago, and you still don't understand the training methodology behind it. You clearly have not Googled it even one time or spoken to anyone who may be able to explain it to you. So just this complete lack of information around it, whether it is, whether she has it and chooses to ignore it or just doesn't have it at all, to me is fundamental pillar one issue with what's been going on here. Well, you know, I, I, you, you, all, you say it well. And what's interesting, I think, is you know, when we started this thing, so we're the 21st CrossFit, right? I've been around for a minute. I've, I've trained at the original CrossFit um, in Santa Cruz, the original HQ. That's how long I've been seeing this and doing this. That When I started CrossFitting, there were like three CrossFits in the world when I first discovered it. So what I'll say is a little rough in the beginning. And let, let me just, let me give you an example. And I hope you can come up with a name for this wad, which was I handed someone a 45 pound plate and we did Tabata squats. And then we rested a little bit. And then I gave him a 35 pound plate because that's what 35s are for. And then we did it with a 25 pound plate, same Tabata squat. And then we did bottom to bottom Tabata squats. And weirdly, all my friends bitched and moaned about doing things like bending their legs for a week or so. And so like, that's not great programming, but welcome to Kelly Start 15 years ago about, hey, what is this? What is this power tool? What does it do? Let me turn it on and, and saw all my friend's legs off with it. So like, I deserve that 15 years ago, you know, where, you know, I did the Tour de Fran during the Tour de France. I was like, oh, I'm going to do some Tour de Fran every day for the whole Tour de France. And that wasn't a great idea either. Comma, now here we are 15 years later, and now it's not quite a fair representation. Like, the programming is so sophisticated. When you walk in gyms, it's not willy-nilly. It's not turn the crank and some shit comes out. Because that's busy work. And we got past that because we didn't understand how the pieces fit together. But, you know, first and foremost, I love this idea that, like, you know, you know what's really good for business? Fucking people up. Like, it is so good, you know? So... You know, that's an old Greg Glassman trope. Well, where, where, why are all these businesses in business? Like, right? what's going on? You know, we had 700 unique bodies in our gym in the 90 days before we closed down. So that's our members, that's physical therapy, that's high school having doing PE at our gym, that's our Olympic lifting club with Diane Fu. I mean, like, the number of bodies that come through are people where we're literally being like, okay, you came out of Orange Theory, you're messed up, you've been soul cycling, and it's not working for you. Like, we have a plan. We had a master's program where like 20 masters athletes are muscle snatching, doing Olympic lifts. So at some point, 
the, the, the disconnect in that language, it, it really is, it's just not true. And what I want to say is, well, show me your work because I will show you that there's no more transparent model than the, the model we did. We all took nasty girls and we're like, oh, you have to show your work. So we'll show all of our work all the time. And you, and you, can't, you can't argue with GPP. You can't. The one thing she kept saying, or that she made a big point, we just take a beating after beating after beating after beating, which seems to be the 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 ongoing bad rep that you're alluding to back when 15 years ago, Kelly used to make you do a thousand squats. You know, the it felt intentional to me. Maybe that's just the best way for me to say it. Mm. Like it, it felt like an intentional. I don't really want to know about CrossFit. I want people to be scared of it. Did you get yes. that impression from it at all? Yes. Thank you. Well, I tell you what, I mean, I agree with that. And what I'll say is our model at the Ready State for Mobility Water is we only point positive. We only point to things we like. So we never, like, I'm like, you want to do soul cycle, church, and deadlifts. You found your community. There's your cardio training, and you're doing some heavy lifting. Great. Absolutely. The bodies and kettlebells, and you're in a Zen meditation class. It doesn't matter. But what's so interesting is that in like generally in this time what we've seen is a complete fundamental breakdown of the human brain the brain in our bodies the most sophisticated structures in the universe start there and then start with the idea that the brain isn't a brain unless it's around other brains and so this community idea this idea of inclusion where we have every body type and people show up and their fellowship i mean it is a close to a cult religion. This is what we are because people don't get it in their communities. They don't get it in their, their workplace. So anyone who tamps down that thing is, that is really a shame. Like I, I'm like, oh, soul cycle sucks. Those candles get in my lungs and I'm doing Tabatas. Like no one says that because we're like, oh, you love to go breathe and work out? Fantastic. And as we've seen this evolution and arc of CrossFit evolve, People have gone out and become endurance athletes in CrossFit, and they've gone and become power athletes in CrossFit. And their, their expression and experience of CrossFit really changes as they chase ideas and concepts, but what you never, ever see. And there was some elitism in CrossFit early on. I, I get that. You know, I was like, <laughs> do you even snatch, bro? But now I'm like, you know, you know the, the idea that in this moment, in this time, you're shading anyone from getting moving when we are... Look, when you, we all went to high school, chance of us being diabetic was one in 4,000. Now, if you're a kid, independent of your color of your skin or how much your parents make, it's one in four that you're going to be diabetic. <gasps> you're a black woman, it's two out of three. If you're, an Afri if you're a Latino male, it's two out of three. And guess what's ripping through us in COVID right now? Metabolic derangement, obesity. So what I really heard was, holy crap, we have a national problem with health and what you're saying is don't go seek out a coach like that's crazy you can do it on your own madness we need more fat burning pills obviously obviously i think that to me that is like a, a really beautiful segue into my second giant issue with this whole thing and there's a million other things we could say about lack of information because like like I said before she obviously doesn't understand training methodology or doesn't want to say it like John said like you know it it, it seemed intentional like stay away from that do my thing and not that thing but and so we can get back to that because there's more to say but I will say that my second giant pillar here is the to me the horrific like detrimental rhetoric of shaming anyone getting off the couch doing better in their own life because of health and fitness in any capacity. Like, I think that that is the biggest problem here, whether Jillian Michael says it or some famous athlete says it or whoever, anyone with a big platform who shits on a training methodology that is saving people's lives. Like the greater overarching issue here is the detriment that it's bringing to people whose lives could be bettered by stepping into a CrossFit gym who now are like, oh, thank you so much for the comments on the video are like, thank you so much for validating all my fears of CrossFit. And I'm like tearing my hair out. Like, uh. she, she actually went one step further than that, Nikki. She said that, uh, you know, everyone she knew, her seven friends, that CrossFit had given one a heart attack, wonder who that was, uh, and given another a, a debilitating sh shoulder injury. Like, she's blaming their, you know, health issues on, you know, basically insinuating that if you go do CrossFit, it's going to hurt you or kill you. 
you might die. You might, you might die. I do feel that way sometimes, for the record. But. A lot of handstand push-ups, after, yes. in, which we tried. We tried that. So, <laughs> the you know, I think, um, you know, you, this, this point is really interesting about where did that come from? So, the fitness industry was sort of a hot mess. It still is a hot mess. And one of the things that I hope happens in COVID is a lot of the silly bullshit dies off. Because there was a minute in my Instagram feed right before we shut down where I was like, I am so confused. I think I understand. I have a doctor in physical therapy. I've owned a gym for 15 years. But what does CBD nail polish have to do with what's going on? Like <laughs> gluten-free vodka and I smash ha- only meat hamburgers. And that's, you know, like, that's it. Like it was really confusing. But what's interesting is what you're saying what she highlights is our lack of sort of education training. So Jillian comes from a place. So where did she come from? Which is really interesting. What's notable about the fact that people aren't comfortable with a kettlebell swing. They, they aren't familiar with picking heavy things up. Some of our traditional bar, because if you strip CrossFit down, what you really have is every collegiate strength conditioning program plus corollary work, right? And if you don't believe in Olympic lifts, we have all the power lifts. And if you don't believe in the power lifts, here are some dumbbells. And if you don't believe in dumbbells, we have kettlebells. I mean, we have a way to get you to front squat holding something. And that might be a wall ball, right? You know what I mean? But what's interesting about sort of that, that piece is really asking where did that come from? This idea that always body weight intensity trumps everything else. In fact, what's really interesting about what she said there is one is that if I look at fitnessing, which is what I call it, in this hierarchy of thing, GPP is our middle program. And, and we've, we, we've said is you can spin CrossFit up to sports preparation training by getting the feet a little bit more organized, by working on more complete positions, right? But on the other side is just do a bunch of work, which is like Soul Cycle, Barry's Boot Camp, Orange Theory, which is fine. It's it's fitnessing. If you go to a class and lift a pink weight a thousand times, you will be tired, right? It's kind of busy work things. But it's hard to progress that. It's hard to understand that it makes you more skilled, and it's actually hard to see inputs and outputs, right? And at the heart of what CrossFit is, is is a complete movement practice, which requires you to have motor control and be skilled. And what we've just said is, skill is too much for you, and it will take you too long, and you might make some errors, and if you run in without a complete program where your body is perfect, and you have perfect range of motion, and you've been training since you were in Secret Ninja Club, since you were two, it's not for you. And like what we realize is those of us who's owned a gym is that people walk in and we teach them everything through our on-ramp mm-hmm. program because they aren't skilled enough and ready enough to join. And what I think, again, where did she come from? Well, she came out of a tradition that wasn't lifting, that wasn't handling large loads, that wasn't performance space. And so what I think CrossFit really did well was saying, here are the elements around high-level human performance. And then we made it in a way where it was, we could actually get some conditioning and strength at the same time. And coordination and skill. And my wife who has exercise, what I call exercise ADD, I mean, she's like, but I, but I did that last week. And I'm like, great, you know, like, let me change the stimulus for you a little bit. So, you know, she said she didn't understand CrossFit and let me just break down functional movement performed at high intensity, constantly varied. Let me just, let me give you this idea. Please, right? please, please. Here's what your shoulder is supposed to do, Right. It does all these things. So constantly varied means you better touch all the positions that a shoulder is supposed to touch. Otherwise, it's not complete training. So when I go through people's programming, I can be like, oh, look, you didn't actually go from an internal rotation position to overhead or from front rack to overhead. So first of all, is that the constantly varied means that we're exposing people to the ranges of motion that they need to be human, right? One of the things around that is that there's so many ways to challenge that. And so let me define intensity. Well, the only way that Jillian can progress her programming is to do more body weight stuff. So it's volume. So the only way or adding speed to a movement. Meanwhile, I can add load and cardiorespiratory demand and metabolic demand and skill. And I can have you compete against the clock or some friends. And look at all the different ways I challenged your position. And all those things I said, that's actually the root of intensity. So what I'm really saying is, can you put your arm over your head 
under load and speed, when you're breathing hard, when you have to do more than three reps, when you're upside down, when you're hanging from a bar, and still your arm over your head. And so once you kind of strip it all away, then all you're seeing is the same sets of body positions challenged in a whole bunch of ways that makes it a complete programming so that if you're really competent at the basic cores across it, I'm not talking about trying to go as fast as you can. We certainly lost our minds about going as fast as we could sometimes. That's what we valued. That's what we got, right? I think you may have even made fun of us of like the creating a gym that was like touchy feely and didn't even keep score anymore. Someone did a long time ago, but, um, sounds like a John thing to do. Uh, maybe it might've been me. Diane Fu in the background is laughing at us because I was like, we're not writing scores on the board for a while just because people are crazy. But once you really start to see it as that, then you realize, you know, 10 to 1 or 20 to 59, that's 45 reps or 55 reps. That's such low volume. Like, it's actually kind of crazy that she was kvetching about these really low volume pieces when if you drop into any fitness in class, you're seeing hundreds of reps. And second around this, and I know I'm monopolizing this conversation. Please, that's why you're here. When she said she got wrecked and she started to fall apart, well, I was like, who values that? Like, you know, hey, I have I have a thousand burpees for you to do. I don't care how you do them and get them done, but whoever goes fastest wins. We have never said that. In Ever. fact, you get punished in our gym if you're that guy, right? Of course. And of course. So what I think is really interesting is that the mentality that she brought into our movement practice, can you imagine applying the, her logic to Pilates? I just did all this Pilates and I was so, my shoulders were killing me, but I just kept doing Pilates or yoga. I was like, oh, I'll show you. Like it doesn't even match up the way that applied. And so what I saw was I was like, oh, here's a person who can't even identify when she's lost position or exceeded the stimulus because, you know, the idea of being able to take what we're doing in the gym and actually apply it to real life has been a gigantic disconnect between fitnessing and selling shit to people and actually training people to be more skilled humans. And that is such a divide. Well, the, first of all, there's no chance that she was really wrecked in that wad, Kelly. We all know it. Like, that's why I think or, it was intentional. Or there w- there was, and I'm just way no. fitter than Jillian Michaels. Well, look, I'd, so I, I, I'm. <laughs> Let snark- me just keep drinking this beer. Hold on. Yeah, I'm snarky enough that as soon as she mentioned what the workout was, I wrote it down, and I'm like, all right, I'm doing that in my basement tomorrow because I knew uh, I could. Oh yeah. Because I knew I could get some posts out of it, and but yeah, I'm also humble enough to go. All right, well, I think she's fitter than me. I do. Like, I'm give her credit. She's 46 years old. She looks really fit. And she's yes. got a good pedigree, right? So I'm like, maybe this one is hard. Like inside of me, I'm like, maybe it's harder than I think it is. So I do it and I, I make sure like I'm, you know, we all have those moments where you, you know you're not moving with good movement. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to have good movement. Make sure that I do this thing right. And the first time I did it, I did it in 507. I'm like, well, that can't be right. I must have missed a whole round first somehow. Time you did it? Oh, yeah. here we go. I yeah. know. This, this is really going to piss her off. So I did it the first time. And I did it in 507. I'm like, well, I must have missed a round. So I have this little whiteboard in my gym. I went and wrote down all the rounds. Oh, I waited five minutes and I did it again. Yeah, so I did it twice in a 15-minute span. The second time I did it in 445, marking off the rounds as I went, you know. And so then I'm sitting there going, how the hell was she wrecked from this? Like, she was complaining about her shoulders. I'm like, this is, first of all, it's not a shoulder-heavy workout. It's burpees. Like, not, it's just not that heavy. You know, it's a lot, it feels like a lot of push-ups, but it's not that big a deal, you know? So, so this, first of all, kudos to you. You're fit as fuck, John. <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but I, it felt pretty good. But, but what you both have said just totally wraps up my like pillar number two, which is this rhetoric of disinformation is harmful to our overall fitness community for all of these reasons that you just explained, Kelly, that she, the methodology makes perfect sense and it truly is for everyone. And this is like false information that it's not for you or that we're trying to make you into something you're not or trying to go as hard as you can so that you die. And then John going and literally disproving that this test wad that she did is harmful to you or your body or breaks down your form in the same way that is dangerous, like breaking down snatch form could be. Like it just, it is harmful to our overall populace like we're all pushing crossfit you know like (laughs) like we're evangelizing christianity because we want the world to be a fitter place like that's why we do it you're saying a little polyam check this out 
I don't know if you have a mother-in-law. I have a mother-in-law. Dude, my mother-in-law rides my ass. She's like so smart and she knows. I was like, come to CrossFit and I'll kill you. And so she's going to CrossFit with us for like 10 years, right? Maybe longer. And I haven't been able to kill her. I've tried. Damn it! But my, my 74-year-old mother-in-law has been training with us for a billion years. You know, what's really interesting is that you know, the, one of the cases is that everyone is forced into some program that doesn't work with their bodies. I'm like, well, if you've ever been with a coach, it's called scaling. Where we scale quickly, we can have a whole group of people. You're box squatting, you're holding a goblet, you're front squatting, you're, you know, full cleaning. It's really, really simple to do these, these scale. I'm sitting here with our head coach at TRS, Diane Fu, who's been coaching with me at San Francisco CrossFit since we were both like 12 years old. Really like <laughs> 14 years, that's how long Diane had together, or longer, right? Diane runs our Olympic lifting program and is like where I learned my Olympic lifting style after was Mike Bergner, then was Diane Fu, and Chinese style uh, weightlifting. And Diane is one of our, if not the most successful coaches at our gym, right? Or the, the gym that was, former gym. Oh, but I just asked her, well, do you do a bunch of Olympic lifts? She's like, oh, I don't Olympic lift with my personal training clients. They're not ready to Olympic lift, right? They can't put their arms over the head. But I'm like, well, you do your front squat? And she's like, well, of course we front squat. And like, right. you know, turns out what we haven't even defined in this language that she's using, and this is really clear around fitness, is what are our parameters? Is it do you look good naked on Instagram? Great. That's a fitness parameter. We can all agree on that. You look great naked, right? It's the only Carrying reason I CrossFit. Eating abs all the time. She's always flexed on her abs. But she didn't define Olympic lifting. She didn't define gymnastics. Are we talking about round off back hamstrings or, you know, running up the wall? You know, what we're talking about is, oh, body weight control. So in our language, we're like, can you do a static hold on the ring? Can you do a dip? Can you do a pull up or a kip? Like I didn't even say kipping pull up. I said pull up and or kip. That's what we're defining as gymnastics, right? When we define Olympic lifting, Mike Berger, who's my sensei, taught me to muscle snatch a PVC pipe from the hang. That way I had no hip range of motion limitations and I could put the PVC pipe over my head, my arms all spread out. And I'm pretty sure I've never seen people die doing Olympic lifting with hang muscle snatch with the PVC pipe. And so what we see is that it's really easy in these arguments, these, these again, zombie thirst traps, never to define your terms. So what do you mean by gymnastics? What do you mean by Olympic lifting? Have you ever done a goblet squat? Welcome to Olympic lifting, right? Have you ever done a wall ball? Welcome to Olympic lifting. So what we see is these correlates, especially when we start looking at shapes and stop talking about methodologies, right? Then it's really interesting to see. And we have plenty of people who are like, this is Mr. and Mrs. Dumbbell. These are how you're handling this because your positions are so wretched. And you're not prepared and that's okay. And we get all the stimulus and all the fun and people are in classes and no one dies. Well, it's not true. I mean, we all die a little every day. Well, right. Accurate. And I die every time I get on the assault bike, but that's just oh, me. Well, can we just have a pause and just, I think you've got some kind of weird fetish for the assault bike and I love the assault bike and my favorite test. I'm going to throw this one at you. Nose only breathing. You can breathe in your nose out through your mouth. 20 minutes, what's your average wattage? That is my ultimate human being test. The wow. average wattage, 20 minutes, breathing into the nose, out the mouth. Carry on. So anyway, we do you, it? I love no, it. I'm never doing that on the oh, assault come bike. Come on, no. let's do it. Do you know that sometimes I sit on that thing for an hour? On the assault I don't bike? Go, I, don't go, I don't go like fast or hard or whatever. I just like put on Netflix. I know you have a C2 bike, so it's like that's what you do, but I don't have one. So I just sit on that thing for, you know what? My ass is like so chapped by the time I get off that hey, thing. I don't know if you've seen it, but ass salt. I mean, that's built in. That seat. There are these other things called bike seats and you can change them out. I think I might need to. I think I might. Because hey, I, what I, I really want is a runner, but I let the timing, whatever. So I just I do, sit on I that do have a fetish for the assault bike. I hate it, but I, I ride it three to four times a week. Yeah, every every single does. week, like, oh, like uh, oh, it's too hot, it's too hot. Now I have ring of fire, and then you add more hot sauce. I understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, look, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I program mm -hmm. it for myself, or I let my coaches program it for me because I know it's good for me, even though I hate it. I mean, as a matter of fact, uh, I did one in the basement voluntarily uh, a week ago. I went in, 
thinking, all right, this won't be too bad. It was 12 calories on the odd minute, 12 burpees on the even minute. I'm like, I'll coast Ooh. through that. I was like, I'll coast through that. I can rattle off 12 calories. No problem. I'm actually pretty good on the bike. And 12 burpees is 35 seconds. No big deal. It, it, but it was for 16 minutes. Uh-uh. That's, that's the kicker. So I was four minutes in looking at the clock going, oh, I, I might die. I might. I, I wish I'd up. I wish I'd updated my will before I started this. It Can was really bad. Favorite little assault pieces. Please. If you do five calories just arms, then you do ten calories arms and legs. And once you take your arms out of the situation, you get to really see. You're like, I am killing it. And you're like, Whoa, it's two hundred watts per. And uh, it's such a sneaky way to get a little extra rotation. And so that that came. Um, and then you know you can again mix and match as you like, but. Uh, I love that we have we have we have all the assault bikes at our house. We have all the assault bikes here, and my twelve-year-old daughter can put out six hundred watts on that motherfucker. Oh, wow! Dang! Mm-hmm. What are you feeding that kid, huh? So good at the games this year. I was like, Caroline, come over here. And she's like, What's that, Dad? And I was like, What are they doing in the swim? She's like, Is that a salt bike and swim and ball slam? And I was like, Didn't you do that this summer? And she's like, Yeah, Dad. Except I make her swim across the pool on no breath. So she does the salt <gasps> bike. She has to carry a weight underneath the pool. Then she gets up and ball slams. And I was like, who is the best slash worst dad in the world? <laughs> Whoa. Are you raising a former games or a, a future games champion? Uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, games champions are tend to be very short. I don't know if you guys know that. That's or a thing. Never played that out before. They're not yep. five ten usually as women, but my, uh, my daughter's going to be very tall, but they play water polo. They do Muay Thai. Uh, they CrossFit, you know, like they're on the mountain bike team. And the goal what? is broad, general, inclusive fitness. And, uh, you know, what's so fun is, you know, my kids speak the language that every high school strength and conditioning coach speaks, that every collegiate strength and conditioning speaks, and they already speak it. They can already power clean, a front squat, an overhead squat, a muscle snatch. And what's so interesting is that when I apply her thinking, Jillian's thinking, to say, well, is this true? And does this hold true across? Because we see kids who do a lot of fitness camp, boot camps, they get to college and they get their ass whipped, or they get to high school into a formal program and they get their, and their ass whipped. So what's interesting is that we have this generation of kids who've grown up, like Kara Saunders. Did you see Kara Saunders' web, her little kid doing that workout after her? So, so Kara, it, like Saunders is my spirit animal. I aspire to be her when I grew up. Hell as yeah. Who's the best? But her little daughter at 18 months went over and like did fake push-ups and, and moved her hands around and pushed the box. And what we see is just the mimicking of this is formal strength conditioning. What you're finally seeing is that we're peeling off the scar of this fake fitnessing. You know, George Hebert was the founder of MoveNet right after World War I in, in France. And his fitness standards in World War I, I would struggle to meet the swimming standard. I would struggle to meet the running standard. I would struggle to meet the pull-up gymnastic standard. He really created this fitness that was just massive. And, and, and that was World War I. And we have gotten so far in baby people and walking is enough. And, you know, here's a rebounder and, you know, the gazelle. And it really confused people for a second. And I think what you're seeing with Jillian is just the dissonance of the fact that it's not working. And people are afraid to really confront the reality that what they are doing is not working. We are fatter. We are more unhealthy. We don't belong to each other. We go to the gyms and it's lonely. And I'll tell you, it's reflected in our COVID death rates. It's reflected in our mental health. And it's reflected in our national security. We have a population that could not even be deployed if we wanted it to. So when we look at this from these perspectives, what I'll say is, is there enough CrossFit? Because I'll tell you what's not working is the fitness industry. If I have to give the fitness industry a, a score, it's a D. And they get a D because at least someone's trying to do something on Instagram. But if I really just say, well, what's inputs and outputs? What's the black box here? It turns out it's a shit show. And, and so I think what you're seeing here is, wow, the dissonance between this is actually hard and takes skill and you can't just do it Tybo and call it good. It's not enough. I mean, you know, working out and burning calories, we've learned isn't enough. It's why, you know, it's not working. So given the fact that she said all of these very specific things and then called you out by name, I mean, what, what is your reaction to being like, oh, 
oh no, I'm the, I'm the name in this. Like what, what, what went through your mind when you were watching the same video that everyone else was sort of like, you know, freaking out about, and then she called on you. So I watched the first minute and then Margaret on our staff was like, oh my God, she name checks you. So what this does, this name check really disvalues, undervalues the work that I've done with thousands of gyms, the number of videos we put up for 10 years. And it also, in this, my wife's going to get me killed. It's like saying, I know a gay person. I know mm-hmm. a person of color, right? So I, I know, and they're okay. It's the same. It's not the same level because I'm just a white guy coach. But what it does is it, it, it really does say, it opens up this whole idea of who owns fitness. And what I'll say right now around health is that the more we codify it and wrap it around a college degree, the more we disenfranchise people and make it unscalable, right? Un- unattainable because you have to, like, what happens if someone is in a poor community and they have access to sandbags? Well, you can go on and learn how to move your body with street parking, right? I mean, you can do that. And all of a sudden what you've done is you, you literally have put this barrier to adherence and a barrier to growth and a barrier to self-reliance in the middle that I have to have an advanced degree in exercise science. But what about the rest of the population doesn't go to college? What about the rest of the population doesn't have access to that? And so what I think is really interesting is it's a really elitist approach to fitness and health. Because what you're saying is that, hey, if I live in a community, I have to seek out this expert person. Is there enough expert people? So there's a type one error thinking in the middle of that. Look, you know, let me tell you the, the best program I ever did. Tour de Fran, all the Tabata squats, right? I sucked and I have apologized to all the athletes who are still with us 15 years later. And I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. I was such a terrible coach yesterday. Today I'm better. But we've always been transparent because we get this feedback because I see them the next day. So this idea notion that, you know, fitness requires high level expertise is just horse shit. Because if I apply the same thinking to SoulCycle, if I apply the same thinking to any other fitness community, it's an uneven bar. So because you have to have, I swing a kettlebell, then I have to have an exercise science degree. So for me, it really is, it, it's not fair and actually further disenfranchises people from understanding that they're actually in control of fitness and that all you have to do is begin. The human being is so tolerant that we can make some mistakes, but guess what we're obsessed with? Going faster, lifting more weight, you know, progressing. And so what's really interesting is that people, like, I don't remember if, a few years ago I was on a show with the Russells, but, right? And I was all about keeping your toes turned out and like knees out, knees, feet straight. And it just it was like, apparently in the time we didn't have anything else to bitch about high bar versus low bar back. Bar we're of. Well, watch what's happened as everyone has lifted heavier and heavy weights. Their feet are straighter and straighter and straighter and straighter and straighter because that's how athletes move. So once again, you'll naturally see people moving towards moving better because we like to lift heavy weights and we like to handle bigger loads. And we like to go faster. And so this natural progression of technique happens if you give people a chance and it takes us a minute to spin up. And we were certainly a radical idea. Like Greg said, rowing, yeah, people have been rowing, people have been Olympic lifting, but rowing and Olympic lifting together, that had never happened before, right? So it takes us a second. Well, here we are 15 years later and we've already made our case and you're seeing people move better and better. So this, this piece that you have to be professional kills me, but... Look at the kids at like Active Life RX, look what Sean's doing. What you're seeing is we can further professionalize the coach. We have a real opportunity for the coach and the trainer to step in and become the health professional. That's what we've been progressing. Who is talking to their athletes three to five times a week about nutrition and then regulation and sleep and stress and movement quality and mobility? Well, it turns out it's the CrossFit trainer. It turns out it's not the soul cycle person. It's not the Peloton person. So what really, what I'm feeling like is we need to actually go a step further and further professionalize the coach, not put an extra arbitrary exercise degree in. That person is the expert in health. Why? Because they live in the community. Your physical therapist is too far away from the squat rack. Look, her, her argument that every CrossFit coach needs a degree in exercise science is the it's the typical argument from authority. It'd be like saying you can't be a moral person unless you believe in Jesus or Muhammad or whoever. If you don't believe in that, you're not moral. Like it doesn't, 
doesn't make sense. I don't need an advanced degree to know bullshit when I see it. Mm. I just don't. Like, I don't need it to know if I have a bad coach or not. I've had bad coaches. I've seen them and thought, that programming sucks. It's terrible. It's too heavy. It's not too heavy for me. It's too heavy for everyone. I've been in CrossFit gyms and seen that. I've been to competitions and seen bad programming. Like, you don't have to have a degree to learn these things over time. I do think she was right about one point that the barrier to entry into CrossFit is really low. It yep. is really low. Like, you get your level one, you're good to go. Like you can kind of, and there's not a lot of money it, it costs to get in, but it doesn't. It, it doesn't take into account exactly what you're saying, which is the years and years and years these coaches are putting in learning this this craft. And it is a craft. It isn't, a, you know, it's a sport, but it isn't a sport. It is a true craft. And I've seen coaches go from getting that level one and doing kind of what you're describing, which is, hey, maybe we should try, you know, a 50-minute Tabata and realizing that's a horrible idea. Yeah. And then, and then over – you know, the course of time, they start to become really, really, really good at this. And, it, you know, the, the growth of CrossFit has been unreal for me. So I, I just, I don't know. That, that Of all of her points, that was one that pissed me off the most, was the yeah. advanced degree. And nothing against people who have advanced degrees. God bless you if you've <laughs> got, got that in you. Yeah, yeah, it's terrific. But, you know, I just, I don't think you need it to spot BS when you see it. I well, totally and, agree. And look at how many examples. So, you know, I'm a first coach and I used to go to Mike Rutherford's site, right? And I would look at Greg Glassman's programming every day on the site. And then I would be like, okay, how do I program? So I watched and modeled good programming for a long time. I looked at like Bergner was doing it every day. Uh, there were a couple sites where I went to rinse, wash, repeat to try to understand people who are much better at programming than I was, right? And it takes a second. It's okay to be a beginner. And the key is you just have to be transparent. And it's, it's an ongoing conversation with your people. So, you know, has no one ever done their first class on their own? You know, at our gym, we had 150 or 160 or 180. I can't remember now because I have syphilis and it's eating my brain. But um, <laughs> too much assault biking, holding my breath. But no one was allowed to just come in and coach. Like, to, in order to on-ramp with us as a coach, you were typically an athlete of ours first. And then you had to watch and hang out with our master coaches and co-coach before our, class, our group would even accept you. You know what I mean? I mean, before they, here's a true story. And this is, no one knows this. I used to do all the programming and all the coaching at San Francisco Cross when we first started, right? In the parking lot, one workout a day, six days a week, just one AM, PM, we'd flip flop. And then I had to go on vacation after like nine months of that, eight months of that. And I was like, Adrian Bosman, can you coach for me? Right. Adrian is a pretty good coach. I don't know if you know this, but he's a pretty damn good coach. I, and back out. Okay. In fact, he's okay. This is Diane Fu, who's sitting here, was the manager of Bally's, and she was Adrian's boss. That's how we sucked it in from Diane and Adrian through Bally's. So thank you, Bally's. But the number of complaints I got about Adrian's coaching, like people threatened to quit the gym. <laughs> people were so pissed. Oh, he was awful. Right? This is Adrian, who is like, all he does is eat, sleep, drink, nerd them around these things. Like, he is a yeah. master in physical arts and culture, and they couldn't stand his coaching. So, at some point, I'm like, hmm, I understand. Like, you know, it, this is ridiculous. The, the concept, it, the whole thing is your point is a specious argument, and it's ridiculous. And more importantly, it doesn't scale. So, there are, are there enough exercise science people who have coaching to, who, who own gyms? No. Okay. So the argument is moot because the mechanics simply don't work. So when you, again, one of the things I like to say is, well, does this scale up and does it scale down? It means that every youth soccer coach needs to have an advanced exercise degree. Oh, you're like, there's another hole in the problem. So pretty soon the whole thing just starts to fall apart under its own yes. weight. To your point. Yes. This is a perfect segue into my third and final pillar of major things wrong with this argument. And I have been coaching CrossFit for 10 years, so I don't know why I don't have abs, but it is <laughs> inherent. It has been a huge part of my life. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Also, White the claw. donuts <laughs> and the beer that I'm drinking currently, which is donut flavored, actually. Don't know. Wow. That is the um, most basic thing you've ever said on this show, and that's saying something. That's I impressive. Love a good, I love a good stout, like a good donut-y. A, a good donut-y stout. stout. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my... 
my third major pillar as someone who has been coaching for over a decade, as someone who started shitty because we all started shitty and everyone starts shitty and every sport has a shitty something or other is that pillar three, every argument that she made that was anti-CrossFit could be made about any athletic program. Insert athletic program here. Insert bad personal trainer, bad soccer coach, bad whatever. Like this is not a CrossFit specific argument and therefore it is mute to me. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, that's one of the things we want to apply, right? Does this apply towards, you know, are her arguments? Let's just direct them to self because part of what I think is really remarkable about this community and look, I'm pro pro CrossFit. One time, I, w- I mean, I was like, I had to hi- like pe- people wouldn't talk to me. I'd go to these big conferences because I was the CrossFit guy, the only CrossFit guy, the only the first time CrossFit. Guy. I'm at the Perform Better Big International Summit. I'm in Rhode Island at Chris Poyer's house, and this guy comes up to me and he's like, "Don't worry, you're not the only fitter here." And I was like, "Fitter?" He's like, "Crossfitter." And I was like, "Oh, okay, there are CrossFitters here." You know, it was it was so counter to what the the industrial fitness complex. Hold on, wait, I'm dead because you know I live in Rhode Island, right? Oh, I didn't know that. So, hey, <laughs> that was like, that are you sound here. like you sound like Buddy Cianci, and it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rhode Island, for uh, giving me that for all time. So, in short, the idea here is, you know, uh, go ahead and apply all of those lessons to across the population. And what you see is that, again, it doesn't fall apart I, or it doesn't hold. So, you know, what's interesting, take Jillian aside and say, you know, as we, what I was saying about CrossFit is that we actually have a tendency to look inward and say, how do we progress? What things do we get incorporated? How do we become a, go out and seek? I've never met a more open group of people. In fact, our gym would bring in, so we'd bring in parkour experts. We'd bring in club bell experts. We'd bring in, right, and like, oh, is there something here? All of our coaches did Edo Portal for like, you know, six months because they didn't were like, we this, is, this is the <laughs> shit, right? Ten hours of muscle-up training every day. And, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, if – if we agreed that things weren't working, I think we immediately would say, okay, you know, from the outside, we, we are definitely like, we wear CrossFit, like a, you know, a, a, a badge of honor, but I've never met a group of people who are actually getting better and better because you immediately get this feedback around the programming built in. So, you know, in short, uh, it's too bad. It's in short that it's easy to do this from your kitchen and lob poo bombs. But if we look at, her conversation, then I'm going to say is if this is generally held belief, we can do better. We can make sure it's more inclusive. We can continue to show these transformational pieces. We can continue to do the outlets that Sin is doing in New York with the NYPD. Yes. We continue yes. to show the transparency because eventually you're like, you know, it's not a gimmick, I guess, front squatting and running. Who knew? Well, and I think to be working. I think CrossFit is trying to do that. I mean, we saw it during the games with the commercials they were running. Oh, uh, mass! That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, I mean, you know, like my 76 year old dad's CrossFitting. Come on, like he's doing it five days a week. He's doing all the same stuff I'm doing, just scaled to a level in which his 76 year old body can handle it. You know, and I think the more we push out stories like that for people to be able to see that, you know, it isn't about you know, Jillian's words, killing yourself every single time you go in and the beating after beating after beating and, uh, and go, and the other thing she said, I thought was really deliberate was that we, um, you know, go as hard as we can every single time. And if you do that, you should only do it twice a week and then take two days off in between. I like, that was the only time I actually laughed out loud. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I got to take four days a week off from CrossFit? Like, seriously? I was listening to Arm & Hammer, and uh, my daughter, Georgia, we were on our way to water polo. She's like, so I just do water polo one day a week, and then I and then I take a couple days off, and I do water polo? She's like, this is crazy. And I was like, okay, all right, Jay. I'm like, you're 15, you don't understand, but you will. Yeah, well, well like, it's deliberate. It, it, in my mind, like, I, I'll give you the conspiracy theory. Let's go back to deep state, deep state Nike for a minute. Like, for me, it was absolutely... Hey, do this two days a week. And you know what you should do on the other two days a week? My app. You should get on my app and do my little hands on the treadmill or whatever her little, you know, fitness routine of the day. Was. Scale. Once again, unless you have access to, you know, uh, LA fitness 
you know, where is she trains? You know, I'm like, oh, does everyone have a, a you know, it doesn't scale. It's, it's not inclusive. It's actually, it's actually highly elitist. So, you know what, you know, what freaks me out, though, is like the number of comments I saw online. On, and I don't know, like weirdly, it was all positive. And I was like, that can't be right, because there's got to be someone moderating these comments because, you know, CrossFitters were in there flaming hard. Like, but but the number of comments I saw on that video that were like, thank you so much. I've been wondering about this, but now I know I should never CrossFit like that's what freaked me out. It's like, she's coming to this argument with so much clout behind her. The people are going to listen and that sucks. Well, that's, that's the point. That's yeah, the point. I, um, I, I, I totally agree. And, um, you know, look, what it says is we haven't done our job. What, what I want everyone to realize is that the glacial pace is the breakneck pace. How, you know, when you, we started this thing in San Francisco 15 years ago, you couldn't buy a kettlebell in San Francisco. Like, say, let's let that sink in. I had to drive down to Santa Cruz to play it against sports to buy all the kettlebells for our gym. Hmm. Now you can buy Olympic lifting shoes downtown San Francisco. It's like, something has changed, right? The internet has changed. These things are out. People are doing TRX, does CrossFit style workouts as a matter of their program. So everyone has come. Chris Hemsworth does tire flips and assault bikes. And I was like, I know Chris personally. And I'm like, <laughs> I know what you're doing there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, and that didn't, that wasn't what that looked like a few years ago. So right. the, the thing is out, what we'll see is that further and further adoption. And if you see people like this, you know, what you're seeing is that there, it's a scarcity mindset instead of a growth mindset. Cause I'll, yeah. you know, yeah. my, we have more fun. And frankly, if fitness is fun, more fitness is more fun. <laughs> Totally. Kelly, we could talk your ear off all freaking night about this, but I know that you have to hop off before you go real quick. You you're incredibly educated. You're wonderful to listen to about all this. And I know that you've got your own thing going on. So people want to hear from you more. If they want more info on what you're doing on the ready state, how can they get more? We used to call them mobility wad, but it turns out there were a few wads out there. It got a little confusing for a second. <laughs> and, uh, I even tried to buy Dick wad, but it was already taken. Swear to God. Damn it. <laughs> and, uh, um, we are the ready state and just jump in, you know, we're actually just started a two week splits challenge today on the site. Ooh. Free. We have a two week membership. That's free. Come over and follow us on social, see what's going on. You know, you can dub dive in. And if you love CrossFit, that's all I obsess about. So welcome. Welcome to my world. My wife calls it knees outing. She's what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm coming up with another argument about why knees out and foot pressure matters. And she's like, you're knees outing and you're, you're lost in the knees out argument. So welcome to my life. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Thank, thanks for coming on, Kelly. And for the record, I own Dickwad, in case you're wondering. Ah, <laughs> there it is. Thanks, yeah. you fine people. <laughs>